Hi and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh and in this tutorial we're going to finish up our model by doing the layout scaling and just preparing it to ready to be tracked. So we've got it open here, we've done our rough model and what we need to do now is make sure it's at roughly the correct scale or as close to the correct scale as you can get and place it in a reasonable location. So what we'll do, I'm just going to check what the scale is at the moment. I imagine it's nowhere near close. And I'm just going to make a cube. And I'm going to change the size of it to 1 meter by 1 meter. And we can see that if this is a meter cube, our building is absolutely tiny. So what we'd usually do, we'd usually measure something on let's go to one of the images let's pick a random one we'd measure say a distance from here to here or any of the windows um, because it's not my property I couldn't really go on it so I couldn't go around there with a tape measure so you will come across these sort of problems sometimes you won't be able to um, you won't be able to find out what the measurements are because you just can't get there you can do a best guess or what you can do is look around on the buildings for something that's probably quite regular, like what's usually going to be the same throughout. And with buildings, your probably best guess is the brick size. So these do vary size to size, um, but generally they're probably quite close. So I'm just going to Google the average brick size and here we go we've got the average brick size here Ooh. so we can use those values there and we're going to make a brick of the values of 225 millimeter by 112 and 75 so I'm just going to go to my cube and go to my poly cube and obviously if you've measured it it's a much easier thing so if you measured the distance you can do it that way but but now we're going to pretend we have no measurements and we're just going to use what we can find. So let's put our um, width as 2.2, no, 22.5. Oh, that's 200. Oh, what's going on? 22.5. Our height is going to be. 7.5 because we're in centimeters and our depth so one one uh, let's go 11.25 so now we've got a rough we've got our rough brick size so if we tear off a copy Select that camera, put it in here. Let's select our brick. So this is our average size brick. And if we just pull this over here, that is one giant brick. So our scale is clearly off. And scale is really important because um helps with your lighting and stuff like that. And whenever you're modeling stuff, you want to make sure that is the correct scale at first. Sometimes you might work in decimeters, um, which is one tenth scale, if you're working on large environments. But it's always best to try and get real world scale straight away. So I'm just going to use a brick as reference. And I'm just going to pick a brick. I'm going to pick something that's going to be easy for me to find. So I'm just going to change my pivot point, pressing insert. I'm just going to snap to here. Hold V and I'm actually going to snap it to one of these points. I'm just going to rotate it around. So, a bit of an odd angle because it's probably not a straight wall. So, I'm just going to slide it up until I find a nice. I'm going to pick this dark brick here. 
it'll be easy to sort of recognize. And I'm just going to slide it in. But like I say, you don't have to do this. If you've measured your th set, you can just do it that way. But I'm just going to assume that we don't, and we're going to use what we can find out. Because sometimes that's all you have. So we've got our position of a brick. So I'm just going to select my scene. I'm going to press insert. Hold V. I'm going to snap it to the corner of my brick. Let's double check that's on. Yeah. Press insert. I'm going to select my scale by pressing R. I'm just going to scale this up. I'm going to keep scaling to this brick. And as you can see in here, this brick is getting uh, smaller. So we want to try and get this. Hopefully that this brick is an average size brick. We'll certainly know when it gets close. And make sure you scale this uniformly. Don't accidentally scale it in any other axis. So you can see we're getting pretty close. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty close. So we'll just control D that and pull it up and see if it fits some other ones. Just checking them, and yeah, it seems fine. So, like you say, we've only got a rough scale from figuring out the brick size, but it would be—it's probably going to be fairly accurate. So, now we've got—if we go to it—we've got scale on our scene group and translations and rotations. So, what we want to do? We want to select our building set geo. Hold shift and press P. And pressing shift and P adopts the translations and rotations on the scale. So if I just undo that, you can see what our translations and rotations of scale is like inside the group. But we need these we need those um, transforms, rotations, and, and scale. So I'm going to select my building set here and press shift P. And if you keep an eye on the channel box, you'll see it change. And now it's adopted all the the changes we've done and that's outside of the group we can you can either hide it hide your brick or just delete it so now we've done that if we make a plane we just scale it up and we can sort of see everything's a bit wonky so Let's actually put that back in the scene. Let's bring everything up to ground zero and let's try and make this a reasonably straight orientation. Because this is going to help with layout, modeling, and everything like that. So it's quite important to get these sort of things as close as possible because you're just helping yourself or helping others. And the less work you have to do by fiddling around with this just makes life so much easier. So I'm just going to double click on that and change my orient axis to world. And you can go to panels, orthographic, and top to zoom out. And I'm just going to orientate this so it's everything we've got is roughly in the center. So we're kind of in the center. So if I go back to my perspective, click and play, and we're on ground zero. And we're in the center of the origin. So this is a really good place to start because when you are tracking stuff, you want a, a centralized place. And say if the layout's already been done, these may be in different places. So you need to make sure that this is all correct. And working to the correct scale and orientating your scene is really important before tracking any of it because say it will save you a lot of time and hassle. So now we'll just go to our building set geo again. And you can see we've got the translations and rotates and scale. So if you press shift P again, you can see now it's adopted all those uh, attributes. And you can keep this plane in on we I don't really need it, it's up to you. Um, I just want the bit with the rough building. 
So the next thing to do is you don't want having these sort of translations and rotations scale on your model is really bad because a lot of the time if you see a model like this that means someone's moved it and you don't want that because you've placed it in the, in the area and the scale that you want and you want to make sure that your original position is always one and well zero and one so what we're going to go to here this is freeze transformations or you can go to modify freeze transformations so freeze transformations here and freeze transformations here. So I'm just going to select that. And now that you can see it's zeroed out all our translations and rotations and scale. So if you load this in and you're like, hey, it's all weird and it's not working and you've got values, that means someone's moved it. So if we zero this out and put this back on one, you always know that this is the correct scale and position so once you've finished doing all your sort of movements and scaling always zero it out and scale it to one or and freeze transformations basically then the next thing you want to do is you can either click here or go edit delete all by type history because this will have history on it so the best way to see this if you go to display dag objects we can see what we've got history and our camera rotations so if we edit, uh, delete by type history, and then we go to attribute editor. We don't have any history up here. So if we un oh, let's delete that. We don't have any history. So you don't want any history. You don't want any translations or rotate. So you freeze transformations and delete all by type history. Then the final thing that you want to do is you want to go to modify and reset transformations. And if you look at the manipulator, this brings it back to the origin. So now when we, if we, let's just make a plane. We can see now that our, our manipulator is at the origin. So now you, you've, you've fully finished doing that. You've prepped it so yeah, we're, we're pretty much done. This is going to be a really quick tutorial on just how to finalize your model ready for tracking. Obviously, yours might be different and you may want to put it somewhere else. But those that sort of workflow is what you need to do when working with um, just rough set geometry and layout. So, yeah, if you enjoyed that tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.